What is going on, everybody? I am joined by Tony Gravely, ahead of September 17th, when he's fighting once again in the UFC, looking to make it three wins in a row. How are you feeling, buddy? I'm, I'm feeling great, feeling great. Uh, no complaints at all. I'm just, just ready to get in there. And as well, we, we take a look at this fight as well. In, in your last fight, you scored a phenomenal KO against Johnny Munoz, who, who's a phenomenal fighter. I'm, I'm surprised your paths haven't crossed before with KOTC, but to get in there and do it the way that you did, coming off of something like that, what was that like for you? It, it feels great. You go in there and you you expect, you know, when I train, I expect every fight to be the hardest fight I'm ever going to have, you know. So, so when you go in there and you have a quick fight, it, it, it feels great. It, it's it's the best thing that could happen. Have a quick fight, no injuries. Um, you know, you're able to get back to training and get on to a you know another fight if that's what you want, which is what I wanted. And you know, happy to that that, that that's what's happening. And and as well, we, we go back to your start of the UFC journey. You started in 2019 on the Dana White Contender Series. So if you had to take a look at yourself from the Dana White Contender Series all the way up to 2022. What would you say the biggest differences are for you as a fighter then to a fighter now? I honestly, the, the biggest difference is, is um, confidence in my skill set. You know, always back then it was, I, I knew what areas I was really good at and certain areas I, I thought I was good at, but I kind of, you know, was hesitant and I never really opened up and expressed everything. But, um, you know, I, I was still, I'm still younger in my career. I've only, you know, I think I, I've got 30 fights, but I've, I've uh, haven't been. I think I've been a professional since like 2015, so not too long of a career um, as far as far as years go. So um, just just progressing and 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 being confident with my abilities, not just my cardio, but everything else as well. So uh, the years, it, it's it's been a lot through the years, and it, it's crazy how it seems like it's been a short amount of time but also a, a long amount of time at the same time. So it's been really weird, but it's been cool to look back. And I've just recently been kind of looking back at the progression I've made in my head. And, and it, it just seems, it seems like so much in, in such little time. So it makes me really excited um, for what's ahead. And as well, looking at the Dana White contenders, when you are a fighter going into that situation, obviously it's, it's a somewhat make or break situation in a sense where you get this, you get inside of the UFC, which, which is a goal for most fighters. So if, if you remember in 2019, what was your sort of emotions going into a sort of fight like that? And what sort of pressure comes along with it, if any whatsoever? It, it was that that fight was 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 really different because it was one of those things where I, I thought for so long before that fight, those, you know, those three, two to three fights before that were going to be the last fights outside of the UFC. I just knew that I was going to get picked up, you know, after these fights, after these uh, these uh, title defenses that I had for CES. And um, so so when I finally knew that there was only one man between me and a contract, it was like there's no doubt in my mind that I was I was one thousand percent sure that uh, that I was prepared and that I was I was going to win so it was it was extra motivation and you would think it would be a, a more pressure but I felt the opposite it was almost like it, it felt like like it like it was supposed to happen and, and everything worked out the best that I know it could and uh here we are here we are indeed uh, and as well now it'd be fair to say you're quite already getting to that stage now where you can start mentioning the top 15 if you get another win here so do you feel making this fight, making this a three fights in a row win streak that the top 15 is something that you'll be looking at next? Or are you just happy and content to keep taking the fights? And as soon as that offer comes in for the top 15, you're there to take it? A um, little bit of both. You know, I, I think that, um, you know, after three fights in a row should be, you know, that should be a good good case for, for wanting to climb and getting the next step. So, um, you know, my job's just to keep winning fights and the, if they give me fights and they keep me active and, um, you know, doesn't matter whether it's, you know, someone closer to it or not, but honestly, my goal by next year is to, is to be up there to top 15. So, um, within next year, I'd, I'd like to get my opportunity sometime next year to, to fight someone that's ranked so I can possibly, um, have a number next to my name as well. And, and just to touch back a little bit on your wrestling career as well, I, I believe you was two-time finalist in NCAA Division One wrestling, the all-time Americans, and you've, you've accomplished a lot in your wrestling career. 
But to sort of have that extensive background in a field like wrestling and then transitioning over to MMA, what was that like as sort of a help starting out as an MMA fighter? I think wrestling actually, you know, if I, if I didn't wrestle, I don't know if I would be here right now um, just because it, it's wrestling such an important base to have. And it's one of those things where you can, you can kind of dictate where the fight takes place. If I'm a really good wrestler, and I get my hands on you, no matter how good of a striker you are, if you don't touch me before I grab you, I'm controlling the pace of this fight. So that, that's that been really important for me, and it's very easy to avoid taking damage when you're on top of someone too. So um, I was able to get a lot of fights in um, in fairly short amount of time and, and stay healthy because I was able to control how much damage I was taking by, you know, taking someone down and, you know, things like that. So that helps me progress as well. So as long as I can get, as long as at that point I could get through fights and, and get back healthy and get to training, I'm not losing anything from, from the fight. So um, that, it's been a tremendous help. And just, and one thing too, that's helped me is, um, you know, my, my college career in wrestling, um, wasn't everything that I wanted it to be and my goal as a fighter in the UFC is to is to do is to uh, kind of take that kind of bitter taste that I had and kind of use that to help me do even better than I did in my wrestling career so um, I've just been thinking of it that way for the most part. And you just mentioned that in terms of the activity as well in the wrestling, and it's something that's carried over to MMA in terms of the activity you had. You mentioned you only started your pro career in 2015. So would you say that also getting that experience, already having 30 fights, would you say that's been a big help as well in terms of your progression? Because I know you're the most experienced fighter that your opponents face. So do you feel as though it's been a benefit overall for your career? And then just going into this one, do you feel as though it can also play into your advantage I mean, I believe it's around 17, 18 more fights than your opponent has had before. I think so, because with, with that experience, with those fights come things that are different than what you get when you when you actually train. You know, you're out there for, and from first half of my career, I, I only wrestled pretty much. So I'm out there for extended, you know, most of, a lot of the, a lot of those fights were decision, uh, you name decision fights. So that's a lot of time spent in the cage, figuring out things to do, things not to do. A lot of, a lot of, um, you know, good and bad lessons learned from from all that time. So um, with all the all the goods, goods and bads that I've had, mostly the things that I've you know struggled with um, have helped me get even better. And now at this point, um, everything that I you know wasn't good at, I'm good at now. So. Um, you know, any, any weaknesses that I would have or that I knew that I had are, are no longer there. And, and then just to look as well, we just mentioned there in terms of the experience, but I believe it's since 2017, you've only gone to a decision twice in what I believe is 14 fights. So would you say that the finish is pretty much something that you're always looking for in fights? Is that sort of big reaction from the crowd and being able to get that finish? Is that something that you're always chasing in a fight? Yeah, that's, that's um, like I mentioned earlier, the first beginning of my career was a lot of, like I said, a lot of wrestling, a lot of just wanting to win. And uh, I, I got to this point where, you know, I, everybody wants to, see, you know, no one just wants to see you win. That's not, you know, for, for the fighter, that's great. That's your job. But also you have to win. You have to also make people want to watch you. And that's, that's a part of being in the UFC and how you progress in the UFC as well. So um, you know, what I, what I started doing is I just started taking advantage of, of, of the, of the advantages I have, which is my cardio. And I just keep the pace for, for, um, you know, 15 minutes or however long it takes. I, I keep as high a pace as I can. And a lot of times people can't withstand that pace. And sometimes I get them out in the first round. Sometimes it's the second, sometimes it's the third, but I know I can keep that same pace and it doesn't matter what round it's in. I, I'm able to get a finish because, um, you know, I'm, I've learned to be more smart with the way I approach these finishes as well. So, um, just staying steady pressure and just waiting for an opportunity because it'll come just being patient and that, you know, it's taken me all of these fights to finally learn this. So, um, this is where the, the, um, experience comes, comes in play as an advantage for me. A hundred percent. And you mentioned that in, in terms of the pressure that you can put on pretty much from start to finish. There's not many fighters in the bantamweight division that I've seen, at least, with your sort of skill set and the fighting style that you do take into there. So would you say you're also one of those matchups that you go into there, not many people are going to have to face before? 
And as a game, do you feel as though that's another advantage that you're able to keep taking into your fights? I think so. I think I think the the pressure that I um, bring my, with my wrestling and and um, you know my striking's come along really well. Um, so with that, I think that's something a lot of people aren't used to. I, I'm I'm a forward fighter. Um, I, I keep a lot of pressure, and and a lot of times when I fight people that are used to being the forward guy, they're now the backwards guy. So. Um, and a lot of people can't fight going, everybody can't fight going backwards. So um, that's, I think that's, a, that's one thing that I know that whenever I fight somebody, most of the time it takes, they, they're going to have to change their skill set or what they do to kind of tailor to me because I have that, that um, the wrestling where it makes, you know, I can, like I said earlier, I can, I can keep them on the feet or I can take them down. So that's another thing that's really frustrating for other people to deal with. And um, I'm just, you know, trying every day, trying to get the best I can at mixing these things together. And uh, as long as I keep doing that, I'll keep getting finishes and um, keep climbing to the top. And then just to touch on a little bit onto this fight on September 17th, going into obviously the, there's the goal of going for, going free and in your last three fights. And then as well, there's, there's a lot that can go on in the future after that. But do you have a prediction for how you see this fight going at all? Is is there a way that you see the fight finishing and looking at your opponent? Or are you just one of those people that can go in there and you're, and you're ready for whatever comes your way? Yeah. Usually, usually I have I have a prediction. And, and this one, uh, um, I kind of have one. I, I think it's going to go, I want to say it's going to be a second or third round. I, I'm not sure if, if I think it's going to be a submission or, or a TKO, but it'll it'll be one or the other. It will be a finish, second or third round finish. 100%. And, and then as well, as, as a fan of MMA or just someone on the outside of it, there's a lot of things that you don't see as what a fighter would see, maybe even hours before, minutes before. But do you have any sort of – someone asked me to ask this question. Is there any sort of rituals that you might have going into a fight beforehand or just a routine that you seem to go through on the day of a fight? And, and then just also the things that people don't see behind closed doors. What do they look like a little bit before a fight? It, there's there's a lot of different things depending on the person. Uh, for me, I, I would say I'm probably more on the laid back side. Usually, when the in the locker rooms, um, our corner is very mellow, just like we are normal. I try to keep everything as normal as I can. So, I don't really have any rituals that I do as far as um, leading up to a fight. You know, I kind of do the same thing. I mean, um, kind of do the usual. Just um, but the day of the fight. It's, it's pretty much the same. We, we do the exact same thing we always do. Sounds pretty boring, but it's, you know, it's, it's the way I see it is I, if this is how I train every day and this is what makes me my best, then why not duplicate that before the fight as well? And then that'll help me perform to my best as well. But some people are in the back and they're, um, they're in their head. They're worried about what their opponent's doing and what their opponent ate and all this, all, all this stuff. So, um, but luckily, luckily I'm able to control a little bit of that mostly because of wrestling and having the opportunity to compete so many times and, um, against another, another skilled opponent. So, um, kind of got to that point, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty chill. So it's in, in the back, it's just like you'd see it at, at, at the gym. 100%. And then obviously we touched on your experience, but the gym that you're training out of, I believe it's American top team. So when you're around yourself who's extremely experienced and then the coaches there they're experienced even the fighters that train there they're all very experienced so to be in that sort of setting constantly throughout a fight camp what's that like as a motivation for you going forward and then what has it also been like as a fighter in able to make the improvements that you have as well it's it's an unreal experience especially coming from someone I, i've always watched um mma and the ufc when i was a kid so growing up i've uh, you know, I, I kept in touch with all these things and a lot of fighters. And so I knew a lot of fighters going into the gym. I already known, known everybody. And, um, well, you think, you know, people because you see them, but they don't know you, but then you start to get these, you actually start to know them. So just, you know, going into the gym for one, just getting to know these people that you're used to seeing that you looked up to, you know, that you even took, took certain styles from getting to see these people and, getting to meet them personally and become friends with them, that itself is, is phenomenal. And then getting to train with these guys and, and getting to pick their brain. And, you know, if there's something they do really well, you ask about it, they'll do their best to, to help you with it and make you really good with it as well. So that it's, it's been phenomenal. It's been like a dream come true. It's, it's, I, I tell everybody, American top teams, like a fighter's heaven, anything you need, 
we you, we have and and we have um we have phenomenal leadership our coaches um all the way up to um the owner dan lambert um richie and conan also they they, they do a great job of running everything primo diane so from from the top to the bottom the entire staff teammates everything is uh 10 out of 10. and then finally from me if for those that might not yet know the name tony Gravely, somehow what is one thing that in any fight that you go into and this one on sept seventh on september 17th what can they expect to see from you as always i mean with me it's always forward pressure and it's always volume i try my best to put as many strikes on the person as i can um you know, I like to grapple, I like to slam people. Um, a lot a lot of forward pressure and a lot of volume is the main thing. Um, I, fight, I fight with all my heart, I fight with everything. So um, win or lose, I'm gonna leave it all in there and uh, it should be an exciting fight. 100%, and that is everything from me. So if you just wanna take a second and shout any sponsors, teammates, your social media platforms as well, just feel free, buddy. I appreciate you. Thank you for the for the support for this for this platform to get to talk and and ramble and get to you know get to introduce myself to everybody. I, I appreciate that. Um, you know, thank you to my my teammates and my my coaches and everyone at American Top Team for for making sure I'm always prepared. My family, uh, my parents, my wife's parents, my wife, um, everybody that that loves me, that supports me, that um, wants that truly wants to see me do well. I truly appreciate it. And, um, you know, I'll do my best to, to keep making everybody from my hometown of Martinsville, Virginia, proud. There you go. Well, I appreciate your time as well. It's always an absolute pleasure to speak to the fighters. So I really appreciate that as well. September 17th, they'll look at, be on the lookout for Tony Gravely. He won't, he won't pretend when he says it's forward pressure, big slams. It's always there. He's always ready to do it. So I appreciate your time very much. And thank you very much, buddy. No problem. Thank you so much. Make sure to subscribe to the Low Kick MMA YouTube channel for all the latest news, event previews, and interviews with some of the biggest stars in MMA.